What's up YouTube? It's Nick from Trickshot Creative and today I'm going to be talking about how to set up a video editing studio. Um, so this is my studio and I'm just going to kind of go around and talk about the things that I like to really have in here. That I really like to have in here. Uh, so first off, um, I guess we'll talk display. So this display is my uh, 49 inch ultra wide LG monitor. <clears throat> and this is, I think this is an IPS panel. I have a review on this. I have had a couple issues with it. Um, I actually have a, a technician coming out today to, to swap out the power supply. So if you get it, just know you might have some issues with it. Um, and then I've got my reference TV here, which is a 55 inch OLED uh, C9. And I really like this thing because it, it, to me, this is the best picture quality, the, uh, the C9 series. It's the best picture quality that you're gonna get from, um, you know, a reference monitor. And I can just give a really quick example of that actually, just by showing the Apple TV's little camera. Okay, there we go. So I have a uh, 4K Apple TV hooked into this, um, which I was hoping was gonna let me cast in 4K. Um, but it doesn't. I, I actually use a, a USB-C to HDMI cable if I need to run uh, something specifically to this. And of course, it's turning off right now. I'm not sure what's going on. But yeah, there we go. Uh, okay, so yeah, this is my you know my reference TV, and I really like it. Um, let's see. Come on. Oh, this is terrible. Come on, go back. Back. Apologies. Come on, one more time. There we go. Okay, so this gives you kind of a, a sense a little bit, and I'll turn the light on my camera off, uh, but this gives you a little bit of a sense of kind of what kind of like dynamic range you're going to get from this, and uh, also the, the highlights and picture clarity. And um, So anyway, point is, this is really nice to have because if you're doing a video on, you know, your ultra wide here, and you want to pull it over onto your uh, reference monitor for a final check, you can do that. And that's a, that's a really nice thing to be able to do. So let me set you down for a second so we can bring up the, oh, awful. And uh, don't do anything like I do it. <laughs> Here we go. So I'm just gonna pull up the 49 inch super wide so that you can kind of get a sense for what this workflow is like, um, just to be kind of in the space. So here we go. So I just set you down, but anyway, so now you've got kind of like your your design monitor, and then right next to it, you get your um, you know your OLED reference. So this is nice because this is a workhorse. This is never gonna this is gonna look good. Don't get me wrong. This is like if you could only have one monitor, this is a great monitor, um, but it's never gonna reach the quality levels, and no no computer monitor right now is going to reach the quality levels of OLED, including, in my opinion, the new XDR display from Apple, but that's another matter. Um, this thing, though, this is the best image quality you're gonna get, in my opinion. And so that makes it really nice to have something like this in your workflow. So if you look at it from a cost standpoint, um, you know, I, I did another video where I'm talking about, you, you kinda wanna back into cost. So for me, with this setup, I started by thinking about what I wanted to have, and what I wanted to have was a really wide screen and then something I could check it on. And that's what this setup is. So for you know less than, I think, $3,000 at current market prices for these two displays combined, um, you know, you've got a setup where you've got a ton of space to work and you know, premiere or whatever on this display, and then you know, you've got a reference monitor to, to check everything and make sure it's perfect. Um, okay, just going through the other stuff that's in here, if you're you know, looking to set up a, a studio. Um, this is, uh, again, you know, not everything that you would need, but uh, it's a pretty good start. So then I've got a, a pro-grade uh, LED a, a dimmable light with a diffuser on it. Um, I think that's a Savage Box. I, I'm pretty sure that's a Savage Box. I really like this light. Um, if anybody's curious, leave me a question and I'll see if I can track down where I got that thing. Um, it's really handy. It's got this little control module on the back that's just super, super easy. Can't really see what I'm shooting here, but yeah, here, let's see if we can focus that. There we go. So it goes from 10 all the way up to 100. 
and 100 is pretty bright, so I, I take these things on shoots sometimes um, just because they, they work really well and I've never had a single failure with them. I have a couple of them. Um, just one in the studio though. So this thing's nice because you can, it's on a tripod, right? So it's adjustable height and you can put it wherever you want. So other thing would be, you know, having a, a tripod is really nice. This thing, I love this thing. I actually got this tripod on Amazon um, and I was a, honestly a little bit worried about it because it, it wasn't that expensive. It was like 150 bucks um, and it was carbon fiber. It, it is carbon fiber. So <laughs> I thought, and, and it's got these, you know, twist mechanisms. So I thought, all right, well, I love carbon fiber stuff, um, but 150 bucks for a carbon fiber tripod, no way. So I tried it and I was thinking, well, I might have to send this thing back. And I love this. This is the, my best tripod I've ever had. And I love it because it's super light. I've, I haven't had any cracks or anything in the carbon fiber. These, uh, these little mechanisms, I don't even know what these are called. These little twist mechanisms, you twist them, uh, I believe counterclockwise to loosen them. Yeah, there you go. Um, and then clockwise to tighten them. So if there's not a quick release, which I, I'd prefer a quick release, but you know, I'll take it for the price of this, this, um, this tripod. And then, uh, so the reason it's nice to have something like this just stationary in your office is that you can have, like say you're shooting product reviews, right? Um, you can have your camera just kind of sitting on your tripod, uh, pointing at your, well, I'm all over the place. Um, you can have your camera sitting on your tripod, kind of pointing at wherever your surface is that you're going to be uh, shooting and you can just leave it there and you can leave it plugged in. So like for my camera, I have a, a power supply that I can run into the camera. So I basically, if I want to do product reviews, I basically just set the camera here and run the, the, uh, the, uh, the camera hardwired with power. And then I hardwire the camera into the OLED. So let's say here, I'll show you exactly how I would set this up. So I'll put this over here, um, kind of in a good spot where I can get a good angle on the desk because I'll shoot uh, the product reviews kind of right here on the desk. And by the way, this controls the TV on its, you know, when it's not plugged into a computer. And this is obviously just my computer keyboard. Um, so I'll set the camera right here. And then this has got an adjustable uh, level too, which is kind of cool. And this thing, this mechanism is really, really nice. So if you check this out, uh, this thing, it just kind of screws in and out. So it's not fancy. Um, in terms of the mechanism, but it works really, really well. Uh, now let's see, I got a 3D printer. That's just for fun. That's no video editing. Um, and then let's see, what else? Yeah, so then I use these HDMI cables. Um, I really like these ones. I am always on the hunt for a good HDMI cable. And to me, this one's really nice. Uh, I use this in all of my stuff that needs HDMI. It's got a braided cable. Um, and it's super fast. It'll handle 4k like this does everything and they're cheap on Amazon and they look really fancy Which is cool. They've got a little bit of a reflective. I don't know if you can really see that on the camera, but they've got a little bit of a, a reflectiveness to them um, It's not focusing properly. I don't think but anyway It's got a little bit of reflectiveness to it and if you've got exposed cables like I do It's nice to have the cables look kind of nice. I know that's a small detail, but I really like that uh, let's see what else. And then I've got, you know, adjustable LED um, you know, desk light, which, you know, this thing isn't a photography light by any means, but it actually puts out a pretty clean, uh, bright white light. So if you're looking for just like ambient light, it's nice to have something like this. And this, this articulates too, so you can kind of put it on whatever. And you can even put something like this on your desk and put it over your surface that you're shooting product reviews or whatever. And um, it would give kind of a nice integrated look without having that, that, you know, like these things are ugly, right? So if you're looking for a good clean look, you could use something like this um, because this is, frankly, this is gonna put out the same light. This is, this thing's gonna put out, uh, you know, 5,600K thereabouts, um, daylight balanced light. So this is gonna give you a nice look. Um, let's see what else. Got the PS4, uh, that's mostly just for fun. And then let's see, what else? We got the Apple TV. Um, we've got the Amazon Alexa Echo Dot third generation. 
um, because I just didn't, I have the fourth generation upstairs. I just didn't really need it down here. This thing's really nice because I can tell it to set me reminders to, um, you know, shoot a video or get something done or, or whatever. And then I've got the, uh, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, uh, fully loaded with the exception of the hard drive, which is four terabytes solid state instead of eight. Um, and then I've got the Sony, I'm going to butcher this, but I think it's the WH-1000XM3. Uh, uh, these are my studio headphones. These are replaced, uh, I replaced my Bose QC35s with these guys. Um, those are great headphones too. I, I gave those to my girlfriend, um, but I, I like these. These are really, these are fantastic headphones. I can't wait for them to come out with the next version of this. Uh, let's see, and then I've got the, you know, the uh, vertical design mouse. This thing's really nice because it doesn't give you fatigue. And then I've got the uh, the newer uh, keyboard and trackpad from Apple. And these, this is a nice setup because it doesn't really get in your way. And this thing, um, it's really nice in Premiere because you can use your, your two fingers to kind of swipe through your timeline. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. So then we also got the, this is the subwoofer so this is a 10 inch klipsch powered subwoofer and i gotta tell you between so i have the 12 inch version of this in my uh living room and then a 10 inch version in here and i probably will stick with the 10 inch version for video editing for now um not not necessarily because the 12 inch wouldn't work and I, uh, excuse all the cords i just moved in um, but anyway, not, not because the 12 inch wouldn't work, but uh, because the 10 inch just, in a small space like this, the 10 inch is just really, really nice. Like, I don't think I would be able to turn up the 12 inch version. I don't know if you can actually see it over there. The, my 12 inch version of this is kind of in the corner over there. Anyway, point is, my studio space is, is a little bit smaller. Um, so, I wouldn't really want something as big as a 12 inch woofer in here because it overwhelms the sound of uh, you know the higher notes in whatever you're playing and if you're overwhelming that then you can't really get a good sense for what you're editing honestly um, so I I think I'm gonna probably stick with the 10 inch in here um, that's it's definitely nice to have the surround sound though so let's see what else we got so this is a uh, this is the same receiver that I have I love this thing. I just ordered a third one of these. So this receiver is amazing. I love it because it, it just works. It does everything that I want it to. I have this one also in my living room um, and everything about it just functions properly and it does Bluetooth. Like, hey, check it out. Uh, input, where'd you go? Bluetooth, show me Bluetooth. Yeah, there you go, Bluetooth. Um, and the Bluetooth functionality is really nice. It's device loyal, so um, I don't know if I, yeah, uh, so it, it's working there. Uh, so it's device loyal, so if I tell this, I want this to always connect to, and that has pros and cons, but if I tell this, I want this to connect to my uh, computer always, or my phone always, you know, it's, it's always going to do that. And I don't believe that there's a way to pair multiple devices to this, but I could be wrong. Anyway, point is, the Bluetooth works really well, and I like it because I can stream to it, um, but also have something plugged into it. Um, so let's see, what I've got running to this right now, um, using a, a little headphone cable, I have this running to my laptop, and then I also, with an HDMI cable, have it running to the TV. So uh, if I'm playing content on the OLED, I can easily hear it out of the sound system without really having to, to move. So this is nice because if you're working on something on you know, your primary monitor and you want to hear it in your speakers um, or your headphones, switching is really easy. You don't even have to get up. You know, you, you've got, if, you're, if your sound output is mapping to here, then it's as simple as you know, bringing up your, your preferences and telling it, you know what, instead map to the headphones port. And um, that's just really, really handy because you're still working here and you're able to, to get it to come out of a different sound output. Um, so let's see, what else do I got in here? So then, um, this isn't really related to uh, the office setup itself, but I'd, I'll just make a call. If you're going to get into video production in general, um, you, and you're going to travel at all, you have to have some cases like this. Um, these are Pelican series, 
uh, not Pelican series. These are Pelican cases. Um, I can't remember the exact, I will find out the name of these um, because I believe that they are available on Amazon. Um, but I absolutely love these things. These things are absolutely bulletproof. And just a quick side note, I want to mention this because um, I didn't know this when I bought these, but I'm glad I bought these because of it. I was told by somebody who works with Pelican that um, if you're traveling with cases, the TSA doesn't always know how these latches work. And that's why they made this latch. So this latch, when you, when you click it down, so that's not clicked down, right? That's obviously not clicked down. You hear how positive that sound is when I click it down? It's obvious when this is clicked down. And a lot of the other cases out there right now, um, you kind of like, you do this little latch mechanism that I don't know if you've had any experience with this, but somebody who's never used one of those latches can accidentally not close them all the way. And when they're not close all the way, you're looking at your equipment, you know, all over the tarmac, which kind of sucks. So um, anyway, this is nice. Um, I also got these on Amazon, actually. So this is really cool, too. I don't have it locked right now. Um, but, you know, this is really nice because you've got this. Uh, th these are TSA approved locks. So you've got this combination. And on the top of this thing, it actually shows you. Um, you see that little red? Wow, I can't really focus on it. I don't know if you can see the red on there. Um, there's like this little red button on the top. I'll just describe it. There's like this little red button on the top of this thing. Um, and if the TSA opens the lock, the, the little red button pops up. So here, I can do it now. All right, so right, focus, focus. Yeah, you can see it right above the logo on the lock, that little red thing, that pops up if the TSA opens it. I love that. Um, let's see, what else? Um, uh, desk and chair, I mean chair, I guess, whatever is ergonomic for you, whatever you like. Um, desk, okay, so this one's kind of interesting. I actually got this desk on Amazon too. Uh, desk, totally personal preference, but what I'd say is, it's nice to have a mat, something like this. So this is a computer mat. This is, a, it's basically like a big keyboard mat. And it's essentially, you know, like a, a huge mouse pad. And it's nice because these things are machine washable and they're really easy to, to wipe off. And they actually just look nice. Like if you're shooting, uh, you know, if you're shooting a product review, it's cool to have a background that's got a little bit of texture to it. So this has texture in the background and also has, you know, a graphic, which, you know, like for me matches my, my colors, which I like. Um, so anyway, those are just a couple of little things to think about with, you know, like what's the scene you're going to be shooting with. Um, and then let's see what else we got in here. I think that kind of wraps up the big stuff in here. Um, oh, this is a big one. Actually, if you really want to get into video production um, and like, let's say you want to get into uh, not just like YouTube, but you want to get into real pro level video production, you got to have a fast internet connection. So this thing is, uh, I, I have, uh, Xfinity right now and this is a gigabit connection so I think this wireless router in our house um, holds something like nine I, I did a couple of tests the other day and we were getting something like 960 down over wireless which is just ridiculous the point is you, you actually kind of have to have speeds like that if you're gonna get into real pro level stuff because you'll need to download some stock footage or stock assets or upload and download uh, large files quickly um, just depending on what you're doing, you know, what the client asks for, you got to be able to get whatever very quickly. So um, gigabit connection, kind of essential. You can get away with slower connections, but you'll have a nice, you know, competitive edge if you've got a fast connection because you can do things faster than other people, right? Um, and then let's see. So then I've just got, you know, a backpack for, for traveling. Um, I've got a bunch of extra cameras and stuff in here. Like I've got a, a Mavic 2 Pro and I've got a GH5S and some wide angle lenses and different, you know, a whole bunch of different stuff. But, um, you know, if you're interested in camera recommendations, I'm happy to talk about that too, but that's kind of its own whole thing. Um, and then I guess, let's see, I just have a couple of other things to show in here. Um, and then I'll just wrap that up. So let's see this guy. Um, this thing's really nice. This uh, it's an, it's an audio recorder. It's a peripheral audio recorder. So this can handle a bunch more than I currently use it for. 
Um, this is the Zoom H6n, and I love this thing. Um, I run personally, so I haven't tested this to its full capacity, but personally for me, um, and you can actually mount this thing onto uh, you know, a stand too, which is really kind of cool. Um, so you could have this thing kind of like floating, and I might actually do that. Um, but point is, uh, I run this thing with one XLR and then you know a shotgun mic like this if I want to do something like narration. Um, and that's that's really handy because you can make the voice recording its own whole you know piece of the the puzzle. There are ways to route this directly into the computer too. I just happen to like that because that's you know it's portable and I can take it wherever. And it it has a really nice screen on it. Here I'll show you the display. So there it is powering up. H6 handy recorder. Yeah, so it'll show you your levels and everything, and uh, that's just that's just really nice. I don't have any um, mics plugged in right now, so I won't show you the levels, but uh, you can kind of see what the display looks like, the color of the display, and uh, if it had a mic plugged into it, you'd see levels on each one of those channels um, bumping up, which is it's cool to be able to see that. A lot of the recorders don't have a screen of that quality, so. Um, and then I guess probably the last thing I'd, I'd mention in here um, is cabling. So it's you really got to have, in my opinion, stuff like this. I got these surge protectors on Amazon too. Um, I have like 10 of these around the house. I like these because they, you know, it's an actual surge protector. It's not just an extension strip. Um, so basically... Our house is closest of all the houses in our neighborhood to the power distribution block out on the curb. And that makes me worry about power surges. So I don't know if that's rational or not. I don't really care. I protect everything. So if if I'm going to be, you know, running power to something important, it's going through one of these first because I don't I just don't have to worry about surges. Now, I don't have a battery backup. And that's because I work on a laptop and if I do have a power cut, this thing is going to be fine for a while. So I just don't really need a battery backup and if I can have less stuff in here, I'm going to. So um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the whole space. Um, and, you know, again, this is by no means everything that you would need to get into um, video production if you're recording, uh, you know, for clients, and I'm happy to talk about that too, if anybody's interested, but, um, this is a really great setup in my opinion for, um, you know, just doing the editing piece of it. And, uh, and one other thing I want to call out here too. So, um, I can't remember where, I don't think I got that on Amazon. Amazon does sell, uh, mounts like this, but I think I got this one from Costco and, uh, this is really nice to have a mount like this. Actually, you know what? I do know that uh, Amazon sells these. Um, anyway, this is really nice because this thing just sits on the mount. So I'll just kind of point out how this mount works because this is my, I've used a lot of mounts and this is my favorite one. Um, this design, this kind of scissor design. This is nice because it gives you a lot of flexibility. This thing can go like 24 inches out from the wall and angle in a pretty specific way. So the TV, sits on top of it um, so this this piece and this sorry I'm not even looking at it this piece and this piece are all part of the mount and then the TV like this mounts to the TV and then it sits on top of this frame rail um, and it's nice because you can kind of like you can move it around and you can get it into exactly you know the orientation that you want so like if you like it a little bit more angled you can do that um, and it's also cool because if you're working with clients and you want to say, hey, you know, check this out, like, it's really, really easy. You just kind of pull it. And I've got a mess of cables because I run so much stuff to this thing. But you can make this really clean and get it into exactly the position that you want, you know, which I really like because I have a, I'm picky and I put it in a very specific position. Um, so that's really, really handy. So let's see. Yeah, I think that's kind of. Those are the big things I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, if you have any specific questions about anything in here, um, or you have a product that you really like, you want an opinion on it, um, or you know, you just want to talk about something in here, happy to talk about any of this, um, and happy to give opinions on 
you know, maybe if you're looking for a different monitor or a different piece of the setup and you just want like an opinion on if it would, you know, work for you based on your use case, totally happy to answer that. Um, anyway, so it's been uh, a how-to, I guess, with Nick at TrickShot Creative and thanks for watching.